Hi, my name is Mattis Center. I'm a spiritual seeker and earth healer. I work with the unseen world that makes the theater of life possible. I do so because I believe enhancing that world will make a better world and in the process a better me. We're here today to talk about a distance or remote dowsing and also about separating your consciousness from your physical body. So it is a bit of both dowsing and a spiritual practice. Even if you're not a spirit, you know, if you're a dowser, if you're a spiritual, you're a spiritual seeker, I should say, and you don't douse, you should learn it because this is a great technique to test that ability and to develop that ability. Now, separating your consciousness is a very difficult thing, but this is what this practice is going to call upon you to do. It's difficult because we have, we have so long accustomed to thinking that the body is who I am. This is me. It is not. Your body is an avatar living in a sea of consciousness where you're experiencing, you're developing to become a poor, loving and caring person. And that is a challenge. And if you want to enter higher states of meditation, approach samadhi, you're going to have to be able to do that. And hopefully this will teach you that. As for the dowser, I would encourage you to learn how to, you should be meditating a little bit and have that understanding of meditation and, and develop your spiritual sense. Because if your consciousness is not that high, you will be very challenged to do this. And again, this is not an easy exercise. It is, it is challenging, it is difficult. Now, it is akin to what some call map dowsing. It certainly is map dowsing, but it's a variation I did myself. It can also be called remote viewing. I don't really do remote viewing. I don't care for remote viewing, although I think Russell Targ is a great guy. I think the idea of CIA spooks spying on people, I think that's wrong. And I want nothing to do with taking on that karma. So I developed this thing. This book, Sacred Sites in North Star Country, that I wrote years ago, I found places all over the Northeast. Here is a book. I'll show you a page here do a little bit later. I found places from Eastern Ohio to Massachusetts, Western Massachusetts, Vermont, New Hampshire, New Jersey, Pennsylvania. And I did it employing this technique. But again, this technique is going to call upon you to develop the ability to separate your consciousness from your physical body. Okay, we're going to begin learning with a simple triangulation. I'm going to show you a simple triangulation. Triangulation involves taking various readings or looking for dowsing and then marking where they all converge as one point. I want to start with this great pyramid here, this stone pyramid here. This stone pyramid marks the intersection of four ley lines, okay? Four ley lines, that's what it marks. So I'm standing here in this point right here, right? If you see me standing here right now, I say, which way is the center point of the ley lines intersect? So they, inter they intersect there. My rods are pointing there. So there's a, imagine a straight, an imaginary straight line going right where I'm pointing. I'm going to go a little bit further. So I walk here. I'm, to, so I'm trying to triangulate. And I say, where is, the, where is the, the center point? Again, I'm pointing right in the center point of this pyramid. So I'm looking for the center point of convergence of the, of the ley lines. So now I walk here a little bit farther up, and I get a third point. And this third point is here. And again, it, it shows that center point of this pyramid. I know that's kind of like, well, you know that, but I'm just trying to show a simple example so you can understand it. You're triangulating. This technique, I've, I've, thousands have been using this for years. I was never really used this much, but a fellow, Bill Getz, a great water dowser who <laughs> helped me to fine tune my techniques for water dowser, has uh, doused over, I don't know, 2,900 or something wells in his, you know, 80 so years. And he says you should always triangulate to give you a greater, greater degree of confidence. And the next thing is going to be, the next two exercises are going to be in triangulation as well. All right. Thank you. All right. This is another simple exercise in triangulation. I want you to learn triangulation. It's a little bit more distance. We had earlier found a blind spring. That's a vortex in the earth, basically. It pulls up water from the depths of the earth. So I say, which way is the blind spring? My rods will point in this direction, gives you an approximate direction. So it's going this way. This is the way I want to go here. I could follow this. But if you're in the woods and you're going here, which way is it? Jeez, do I have to walk 50 feet, 500 feet, 5,000 feet, five miles? You don't know. So triangulation is going to help you develop that skill to figure out how far you have to go. So 
What I do is I walk up a little bit farther here. Keep walking up farther, walking up farther. Slowly, slowly, which, and then I'll stop at some point and I'll say, which way is the blind spring? And there it is. I can't see it. Oh, it's right there. There it is. Yes, it is. So my rods are pointing in that direction. So I can triangulate these two points. More importantly, what does this teach us? It teaches us we take these two points and we understand not only does the connection come to, but there's a, di there's a, there's a divergence between how, between the, the angle that they come in at. In other words, if, the, if, the, if, this, if this blind spring was in a great distance, and I said, which way is a blind spring? I walk another 50 feet, and it pointed in the same direction. Which way is a blind spring? It means that the blind spring would be in a great distance. You couldn't, you know, you got to look at it and say, these two points, if the two points, if, if I walk, you know, 20, 30 feet and I ask where it is, and it's in the same direction, that tells me I got a hell of a long way to walk to find that blind spring. So this, as a geomancer, is an invaluable tool because you know if you, if you keep checking and the angle changes after only walking 20, 30, 40 feet, you know you are very close. So that's what it is here. So that's where it is. We'll go show you where it is right now. So I'll walk this right now. This is a little kind of tricky here. So we'll walk here. So I showed you it was here. Just walk forward. And again, this is the challenge. This is why you need to learn this kid. We're in the woods and we're trying to follow this thing. This is really, really hard. It's not so easy. You think, well, I'm just going to like do here. No. There's obstacles. There's bogs. There's swamps. There's stones. There's hills. There's potholes. All things impediments. So learning how to triangulate long distance is a valuable, valuable tool, you know, if you do this. So now here we are. And this, these steps mark this, 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 this holy area, this blind spring. So we come upon this blind spring right here. And we marked it with the staff to make it easier for people to see for, for the video here. But, but again, this triangulation, if you are like, if you like, look, okay, it's over here, your rod's point, you walk 50 feet, and it's pointing in the same direction, that means that, that what you're looking for is in a great, is very far ahead of you. The triangulation can cut down and give you a rough idea of where the object is relative to where you are. And again, as you saw, we're walking through the woods, geez, and crimeters. You can get so lost so fast and get so, your direction, just because you're constantly sidestepping, sidestepping. Anyway, now we'll go on to the, the bigger triangulation where you begin to separate your consciousness from your body. I hope you've gotten a grasp of triangulation. Please practice the triangulation. Thank you. All right. Now we're going to go to the phase of triangulation where you separate your consciousness from your physical body. Now, we're going to look for a strike point. A strike point is a spot on a dragon line where lightning is meant to hit, attracts lightning, it absorbs that lightning, and then funnels it into the dragon line. Um, so now that's what we're here to do. So I'm looking here, and I'm going in the distance, and I'm saying, where is the closest, where is the closest strike point? My rods are pointing this way, all right? So then I say, okay, I don't know if that's 100 feet, 1,000 feet, or a mile. So I have to determine that. So what do I do now? is I pick a point in the distance. And we've marked that point with a staff. You can see in the distance, and I say to myself, all right, so I've marked the point in the distance. And I say, where is the dragon line? I should say, where is the strike point? It's still there, so the staff. So what I need to do is I've selected a point in the distance. Those staffs right there, I'm going to now move my consciousness to that, that, that place. I'm going to say, Mattis, you are right there. You are where those staffs are, right in front of that tree. And as you move your consciousness, now I imagine myself being there. I've separated my consciousness. And I say, where are, where are, where is the strike point? And lo and behold, my rods now, because I'm, I'm dowsing from there, 
are almost perpendicular. Remember, I looked at the strike point from there. So it's perpendicular to that point. So what does that mean? Those staffs are about 100 to 120 feet ahead of us, and the strike point is off to the right, maybe 10, 20, 30 feet, not too far, close by. But again, I use triangulation, and I use triangulation by separating my physical body from my consciousness. This is very valuable if you are a geomancer and earth healer, because you've got to go in the woods and find places, and they could be, you could find something, but then you don't know if it's, again, 100 yards or 1,000 yards or five miles away. Plus, you run into sorts of, all sorts of impediments, you know, stone walls, uh, hollow areas, water, bogs, dense forests. So you've got to learn how to navigate there, and this, this is an ability. Now, even if it wasn't that close, I pick a point, and I can continue to pick point after point after point to find what I'm looking for. Now we'll just walk a little bit, but we'll pick up on the other side where those, where those staffs are to show you what it is. But again, this is an invaluable technique. Where is the strike point? So here I am, a little bit ahead of the staff. The strike point is almost perpendicular to where I am. I have to take a right turn. So now I'll go looking for the strike point. I'll walk a little bit up here. It's in this general area. We were here earlier. See now what happens to my rods? I did this in advanced dowsing techniques. My rods are telling me I'm close, confirming it. They open up here. This is where the strike point is. So the strike point is here, and, and, and the surroundings are going to confirm to you this is a real strike point. Now strike points are attached to a dragon line. I'm going to say which way is the dragon line going. So I'm following the dragon line. I'm following the outside, one, the, the, this shoulder. I'm following one shoulder. Look at how it turns. It turns like an SOB, huh? doesn't it? Dragon lines weave on now. They are a beautiful, majestic sight. If you could ever go, Lower Hudson Valley, going to up to all the way up to Albany. There are tunnel, there are several places that have these dragon lines. You can see these beautiful curving walls throughout the landscape. They're just an uh, a majestic view, but they're they're so powerful. That's why I think Landform Shuang Shui calls them dragon lines. Now let's look here. What else is going on? Two things here to look at that kind of give you some confirmation. The land. This is something very funky. Now the question is, was this tree hit by lightning or did it die? We don't know. We don't know. What we do see is a very unusual root here, right? This is a very unusual root. I don't know. But this here is very clear. Something's been fried here. You can see the burnt, this, the burnt, the darkness, lightning probably didn't hit it directly, but was very close. So this sure, sure, sure looks like lightning struck this point. So I don't think it's, and you can see the twisted tree here. Look at the tree twisted. Now that tree could have fallen for any reason. But anyway, some sort of stuff is going on here. There's some twisted trees, some other things happening here. So lightning has probably hit here at least once, probably several occasions. As um, the guy that did the most, I'm trying to think of what his name is, uh, Wilsnick. The guy that did the, the, the largest study on geopathic stress, he said years ago that lightning favors the same place. Indeed, it does, a strike point. So you constantly, if you're in the woods, you see a twisted tree, you're a dowser, see if you can find the strike point, okay? All right, we'll go on to the final exercise here, which is learning to, you know, I'll show you the next exercise, all right. This is your final exercise in developing the ability to separate your consciousness from your physical body. Again, this is very challenging, but we're going to begin as I've, I've, I've struck off, I've marked off three different points to highlight what I'm looking for. It doesn't matter what the three points are. So I'm going to come here. The first one is a water vein. There's a water vein right around here, right? Come here where it is. My rods are pointing. It's right there. All right, so it's right there. That's where water vein is. Now I'm going to keep walking a little bit further. And notice how my rods turn. In my advanced dowsing, I told you, this is a method I use to give me greater confirmation. My higher self telling me, you got this, Mattis. 
opening up to tell me that there is an energy line there. Now, I'm going to go to the final point that marks the ley line. So now I'm going to go here and show which way, where's the energy line. Look at, it's not, it's the ley line. The ley line's kind of like a, just sort of an angle. All right, but there's the ley line. So I found three different things, all right? You can set this exercise up to find anything you want. It could be two energy lines or three water beams or five energy lines. It doesn't matter. All that matters is that you find something that you're familiar with and you can douse out with high conviction. You have to have a high conviction. You gotta know for sure, I got this. You cannot be thinking, well, maybe there, oh, no. You have to be assured that you are confident of what you found. So I mark these things in a straight line for a specific purpose, because we're gonna now begin walking this straight line again and again, farther and farther away. This is the exercise I noted before that I did to teach me to get my book. This is the one thing that I did a lot of over time to develop the, set, the skill of separating my consciousness from my body. All right, three feet away from the, the energy line, the water vein, and the ley line. So what I'm now gonna do is I'm gonna imagine myself walking. There's a staff on the lower level. I'm gonna imagine myself walking along that line. I'm gonna look over there and I'm gonna say, you're walking over there, buddy. Now my rods are again turning around saying, you got this, Mattis. And so I'm gonna walk and I say, where's the water vein? Okay, there it is. Now I'm gonna imagine myself walking further ahead and I'm gonna say, where is the energy line? As I'm walking, poof, I hit the energy line. And then I'm gonna go again and I'm gonna hit the lane line. All right? I am not looking, I am not moving. I am, my, my consciousness is moving. I'm saying, I am walking. I'm imagining myself walking along that straight line there. Can you show that straight line there? You can see the straight line there. There's a red and white staff. That's the line I imagine I am walking on to douse out these things. And again, when you douse this, it doesn't matter. It could be five energy lines, five water veins, or four ley lines, or two energy lines. The most important thing is, is that you are very familiar and confident in your dowsing and what you're looking for. And they're kind of in a straight line that allows you the ability. Now I've walked 30 feet, 30, 40 feet, I guess it's 30, 40 feet away. So now I'm gonna walk back another 30, 40 feet and do it all over again. And I will keep repeating and repeating it farther and farther away. But again, just keep practicing it, it'll take time. Okay. So now I am about 50 to 60 feet away from the lines. And I'm gonna start at the other end. I'm gonna walk that straight line and I'm gonna say, show me the ley line. I'm beginning to walk. The ley line is right there. Show me that's where the ley line is. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna say, now where is the energy line? I'm walking ahead. It's gonna show me where the energy line is. And then I'm gonna keep walking even further and I'm just saying, where is the water vein? So I marked all three of them. I began from the other end and I'm not moving at all. I am visualizing myself walking and being in that space. I'm separating my consciousness from my physical body and say, Mattis, you are walking that straight line and that's what you're doing. Now let's go up here farther if I can find it, get in the dark wood. We're now at an angle. We're at a different angle. We're about 50 feet away, right? It doesn't, it doesn't matter where you go. In fact, I would tell you to do it at different angles. Do it from behind, in the distance. On, on, the, on the right side, on the left side, just keep changing the angle. You are trying to separate your consciousness from your physical body. That's what you're trying to teach yourself more. And the more exercise you can do, just like in lifting weights, whatever, different types of things are gonna build your muscles. You wanna develop that ability to separate that consciousness from your physical body. So now I'm gonna to say to myself, I'm walking along that staff in that straight line, and so I'm starting to walk, and again, my staffs are telling me, you got this, Mattis, and there is the first one. I'm saying, where is the water vein. So now I'm going to get back on the line. I'm walking on that line. And again, I'm walking a little bit further. And lo and behold, there is the energy line. Now I'm going to ask for where is the lay line. And they go, well, look at the lay line. I'm going to look at the lay. There it is. And the lay line asks to show me which way it's moving. And I'm assuming I'm there. It's there when I'm there. So that's what it does. I projected myself walking that line. You need to keep doing this exercise in definite forms in a distance to the right, to the side, in different ways. All of this is gonna help you be able to separate your consciousness from your body. Because now we're gonna move into the, the challenging part of looking at a map and then looking at pictures to fine tune it. All right, we'll see you on the other side.
you're looking at a map of northeastern Ohio for my book, Sacred Sites in North Star Country. The three star location contained fields of consciousness. We're going to be looking at the state of Ohio, and I want you to try to visualize your consciousness or imagine your consciousness following the cursor. Uh, and we'll try to find one of these places in the northeast with the fields of consciousness and show you by example how I found. All right, we're looking at a map of Ohio right now. Now, the first thing to notice about if I want to douse this, again, this is most to serve as an example to show you how you can do this, but the first thing to notice is what? It's, it's a big map, it's a big state, and the map is too expansive, it's too large. You, you really can't douse it, so I need to try to come in and fine-tune it. And since we're going to be focusing on the North, uh, northeast corner of Ohio, I'm going to tune in there more. Just keep going in more, 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 more. So we go in there. So now we get an idea of, you know, where to go. So we're going to come up this sort of area here. Um, so we can go up here. Again, I'm looking for a field of consciousness. I'm starting in this general area. There is there is something here, but we're going to go up the coast. So this 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 Geneva State Park. There's something there. There's clearly a field there, but we're gonna I'm gonna move up the coast here. So I'm moving up. I'm holding my dowsing rods here, and I'm moving up the coast. I'm moving up the coast. So what I'm just trying to do is just keep going up and up the coast. So maybe I need to just keep going up the coast and probably begin to fine-tune it some more. Fine-tune it some more. So as I get up here, again, I've got to take my dowsing rods up and walk up a little bit more. And again, there's something in here. There was something, there was a park there that I did have Sunset Park, but erosion from Lake Ontario had it closed. So I'm going to keep going up here, keep going up my dowsing rods. I'm looking, and I probably have to try to fine tune it. If I want to focus in on an area, I need to just, again, make it more expansive. But I'm going to keep going up here, keep going up here, bring out my rods, keep looking, keep looking. And we just go up the coast here. Put one dowsing rod in my hand, see if I can do it with one. Not as good as with two, but I can still do it. So I'm going to go up the coast. Going up the coast. Going up the coast. Going up the coast. Going up the coast. So now I go past this park. I went past this park, I went up to here, and my rods turned back. So let's focus in on this area right now. And again, we need to focus in on it. What we need to do is, again, make the map larger and larger so we get a better reference point, okay? So I fine-tune it, so I'm in here right now. So let me look here where my rods are telling me. So if I go here, I'm going to triangulate. So when I get over here, my rods are telling me it's something in here. It's, it's that way. And when I'm from over here, it's telling me it's over there. It's over there. So what I need to try to do now is to try to go up here more. Maybe find, just expand a little bit more. I keep expanding and expanding. You can you just fine tune this more and more. But my rods are telling me it's clearly in this sort of area here. It's in this area, this general area here. So what I'm going to do now is go look at the physical map. I pull back a little bit. Pull back a little bit. So I'm looking here. Rods just turned around, just gave me a little spin here. 
and they're pointing over in this general direction again so I'm going to fine tune it fine tune it so again we're in this area we're in this area uh, fine-tuning it any more here would be difficult but that's the general area of what it is because if we went down I don't have a point of reference you always need a point of reference you need this like walkway you need these trees if I go further down here all I got is grass how can I fine-tune at my point but anyway I hope this gives you an idea of how to then do it to do the map dowsing again your consciousness is moving along the map as you douse and you try to imagine yourself physically being there. I mean, not you're physically, but your consciousness is there. Your consciousness is moving all along with you, and you're connecting with the space. You're merging with the space, and, and in that way, it can help you. Anyway, I hope this helps and gives you an idea, but just remember to practice, practice, practice. All right. This is a picture from my book, Sacred Sites in North Star Country. It is a picture of the field that we just found using this distance, remote, separating your consciousness dowsing technique that I've just taught you. Now, the backpack represents the center of the field of consciousness. Uh, a field of consciousness can be anywhere from 35 to 40 feet in diameter, kind of sort of an oblong, circular type of shape. Now, we are facing east and we are to the left of the, of the road, and we're facing that first house that we were looking at. But this is, uh, it's key to go look at a space once you've doused it in the distance. I mean, you can be pretty much sure that you're there, but if you really want to fine-tune your, your technique, you should try to go visit that space. But anyway, I hope you uh, learned this technique. It's going to take a lot, a lot, a lot of practice. But stick with it. You'll get it someday. Thank you for your time and consideration. Please like and subscribe.